West Virginia, Mr. McKinley for five minutes for questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I uh, try to come up with some questions that haven't been raised so far with it. And, and I, my, my first question would primarily would be just how, met, how much federal resources are truly being allocated to this issue? Do any of you have a, a grasp of how much money I'm talking from NIH, CDC, DOJ, DEA? Well, I how much money are we putting into this program nationally? I can speak for NIH because it's actually the agency that I'm representing. And from the perspective, for example, there are two components to it. One of them addressing Can you the just give me an amount, an approximate amount? For pain, we are um, putting $500 million on opioid use disorders. Collectively, Doc, I, I, we have a short time. So collectively, are we talking about $2 billion, $5 billion? Um, we, we have we have we have a little over two billion in our block grants for um, substance abuse prevention you, you and treatment. You do over the next yeah, discretionary. But can is there some way that one of you, can, or however, can collectively come up? How much money is the federal government allocating? Because Mr. Pallone suggested in his testimony or in his comments, we need to put more money into it. I don't know how much money we're currently putting into it. Yes, if I could yes, move yes, on we, to the second, so if someone could get back to me, I'd. Maybe from CDC. We we just have 125 million at yeah, CDC. Okay, <laughs> but collect everybody. What 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 priority are we really setting on this issue? Secondly, I'd like to know how much money is coming to West Virginia. I, we've been asking for over a year. We can't get answers from any of you. So here's a chart that shows it. We have opioid related deaths. We're the highest in the nation at 41. Per 100,000, that's 30%, 20% uh, higher than the number two state and almost 40% higher than the number three state. It's two and a half, nearly two and a half times the national average. I don't understand why more resources aren't flowing to help out a rural state like West Virginia. Let me give you an example though. On the, on the uh, neonatal births uh, with opioid dependency, the national average is six per thousand. But in West Virginia, it's 140, tw nearly 25 times worse than the national average. So when West Virginia applied for a grant from you all, SAMHSA, they were denied. I'd sure like to know why. Because you all stood up, sat there, and talked about how you're dedicated to this issue, and here we are with a desperate situation, or we're underwater, and we put in a grant, and we're turned down. Uh, I, I, we've also, we're excluded under their first round of the CARA, the 180 some billion dollars, or a million dollars we're supposed to, that's supposed to be distributed. 144 million was distributed. West Virginia got zero in that first round. This has got to stop. This idea coming from the Beltway, you all sitting back here, we're on the front lines. And we, I want to build back on what Harper was talking about in, in rural America, that I, I just came from a county, uh, Taylor County, 27,000 people, 125 arrests already this year. They have no resources from the federal government for help on this. They, for five years, they've gotten not one dime to help out on the opioid problem they're having in, in Taylor County with 27,000 people. And then I went to another county, Preston County, three little towns, all collectively, between the three of them have less than 1,000 people. They don't have the resources to have a teleconference. They don't have the resources to apply for a grant to seek money. They're getting zero. No money is going to that rural county because they can't apply for it. Now, I don't, I would like to hear how we do this from rural America. Are we telling them, you've got to file for an application? We did, and we were denied by your group. What's the other group? Are we telling these little counties or towns that have two or 300 people, you have to, file, you have to get a grant writer to submit something for you? They can't afford it. They don't know how to do it. What is your suggestion? And get out of the beltway and, and come with me back into rural America to find out how this physically works in a town of 200 people with an 84-year-old mayor. 
How are they supposed to address it when there's, they know, the mayor's talk, they know they're selling drugs in the post office parking lot and they don't have a police officer in that community to make an arrest. They physically see it every day, drugs being sold there. Now, how do we stop it? I'm sorry, did yeah, I miss something? I can, I can just say that um, CDC is funding the state of West Virginia to work with all the counties. I'm so sorry that the people in the towns you've been reaching haven't been getting support, Zero. and we need to do better. No, we're getting 2.6 million to the state of West Virginia to work statewide for- um, We've got the worst situation in the country, mm -hmm. and we're saying, file applications, mm -hmm. make an application. They don't know how to make an application. They don't have the resources to do it. There's no grant writer, and then when we did, we were denied. 25 times worse than the national average, and we were denied on neonatal. You, someone's gotta tell me what, what we did wrong why we don't deserve to have more treatment. And you do deserve, and I've actually gone to the communities in West Virginia and Kentucky, I'm going to Ohio. I think that what we're trying to understand is the infrastructure and create partnerships. And also, interestingly, in West Virginia, learn from what the communities have developed to other that actually have been effective to help other communities with similar problems. But you are absolutely right. The needs of, of rural America are some that require special attention. Thank you. And Thank you. I yield back. Gentleman's time's expired. Chair recognizes the gentleman.